Alrighty, so <clears throat> I'm going to talk briefly about Polygala tenuifolia. And I'm not being a nerd, that's actually how people talk about it. They just use the scientific name for some reason. So, uh, now, I don't have a lot to say about this because there is not a lot of work that's been done with it yet. It's kind of a fast-rising star in the nootropic slash supplement community. I first heard about it over the summer, and you know, I'm still hearing about it all the time now all of a sudden. And uh, it's, there's a lot of antidotes on it. There's some animal studies. I'm not personally aware of any human studies that have been done on it. But correct me if I'm wrong. Feel free to share that if you know of any. But uh, So basically the reason people use it, the reason it's so popular, is because it's supposed to be a really good antidepressant. Now, I have tried it, but I have not properly done a washout and then just tried it by itself for a while to really see what it's doing for me. So I'm going to kind of refrain from my personal experiences with it at this point because I haven't really properly tested it. But I just want to touch base with you on this because it's interesting and um, I wanted to point it out. It's something that you might want to try. It It's pretty safe as far as I can tell. And uh, it so its mechanism of action, uh, I don't know if that's even fully been elucidated, but it, it is an NMDA antagonist, which as far as antidepressant action is concerned, I think that's overrated. I can come back to that in a bit, but also it's good for uh, these other neurotransmitters. Uh, serotonin, uh, and like dopamine, norepinephrine, that type of thing it can, it can help with. So it's probably any antidepressant action it, act it has it's probably more due to that other stuff. So, and I think it does stuff with acetylcholine too. I think it, it's an acetylcholinesterase inhibitor. So it does. It's it's kind of I guess you know again in pharmacolo pharmacological terms it's something of a dirty drug, but because it does I mean, dirty doesn't necessarily mean bad. I don't think. And you know, if you're looking for antidepressant action, it might be good that it works on multiple transmitters. And I don't know to the extent that it it. It uh, works on these either, uh, but um, apparently it works on all those to some extent. So that's that's the gist of polygala right there. Uh, it's supposed to be a good antidepressant, and for those reasons, I um, and now in the animal studies that have been done, it it was not it wasn't even given orally the ones that i see they tend to just inject it so i, I don't know how well this carries over to people it it uh I, I was able to find a study at least one study where it's neuroprotective and so that's interesting it's another example where you hear about it for this one thing everybody's using it as an antidepressant but then the studies that have been done but here I found that it might actually be neuroprotective, so certainly falls into the nootropics camp. And uh, so I don't know how good it is. Uh, it's still, you know, it's still the research has been so preliminary at this point that I don't really know what it does. That's just the bottom line. And uh, you might want to try it. I. Uh, but I did, I did want to maybe, because I don't have a lot to say about this, maybe talk briefly about these NMDA antagonists. Um, they're all the rage right now, and I think it's a little bit overrated. And I'm not an expert, but from you know, what I'm, as a fellow hobbyist, as a fellow guy who's just trying to you know improve himself chemically, it seems that there isn't a good reason to suspect that NMDA antagonism does anything for depression. In fact, pharmaceutical companies, as I understand it, have already developed, they've, they've attempted to develop drugs based on NMDA antagonism for depression, and they failed. The drugs, they just weren't effective. So, there's that. And then it, also, these things that are NMDA antagonists that are good antidepressants, it turns out they all have other mechanisms of action. Ketamine, NMDA antagonist. But... That's not the mechanism of action. It's been shown recently that a metabolite of ketamine works on the AMPA receptors. That's its mechanism of action. 
DXM is an NMDA antagonist, but it also works on these other neurotransmitters, such as serotonin, to a lesser extent, dopamine, maybe norepinephrine. We already understand these to be important for depression, so that's really the most parsimonious explanation. And again, with polygala tenuifolia, it's an NMDA antagonist purported to have good antidepressant effects, however, it works on these other neurotransmitters. So, I don't know if the NMDA antagonism is important. NMDA receptors in general are important, so I guess it could be good for other things, but it's probably not why it's good for depression. But anyway, I just want to throw that in there because of all the videos that I've made so far, it seemed like the best place to throw it in. Uh, that's pretty much polygala and a minor rant, if you even want to call it that. And uh, I'm definitely going to have more for you on this in the future, if nothing else, just my own experience with it. And until then, thanks for watching, and of course, be safe.